Hey guys, it's Jake here with eTrailer. Today we have a 2020 Chevy Silverado 1500 and we're gonna be taking a look at and I'm gonna show you how to install the Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs. Air Helper Springs are going to be a suspension enhancement that is designed to help take some of the load that you have either in the bed of your truck or on the hitch behind your truck. Um, to show you a little bit better what we mean, it, we're gonna go underneath the truck and show you what they look like when they're installed. Now underneath our vehicle, you can get a much better look at the airbags and what they're actually accomplishing. So you can see our bracket here is bolted up to our frame and it's gonna take the place of your Johns bumpers and it's bolted down to our axle also. And what it's designed to do is it's designed to take some of the load. It's not gonna take all of it. You still want your leaf springs to compress a little bit um, and you want your shocks to be able to work as normal so you can't have them too stiff but this allows you to adjust the air pressure on the inside to support the load that you're carrying. These airbags are gonna have a load carrying capacity of 5,000 pounds and a PSI rating from five to 100 PSI. Um, and the reason that is five PSI is the lowest rating that you can have in these bags is because you're gonna to wanna to leave at least five in there for the integrity of the bag itself. If you have no air in those bags, what can happen is um, if you ever flex your suspension, there can be kind of a suction on the inside of the bag and that can damage the bag. Or if you put a small load, like a small load of luggage or something in the bed of your truck and you're pushing down on an empty bag, that bag can fold over on itself, causing pre premature wear on the bag itself and cause leaks in the future. So you wanna keep five PSI in them just to keep them blowing up. Now one thing to help with the bags not folding over themselves is that they are going to be double convoluted. So um, that is designed so that when the bag compresses, it compresses straight down rather than kind of rocking one side to the other. Um, if you had a single airbag, it's kind of going to fold however it wants, whereas these are kind of more designed like a spring to go up and down. Now the way that you're going to adjust that PSI in your bags is through the manual inflation valves. The kit itself will come with two manual inflation valves. You might see that we only have one down here. Well, that's because we've paired these airbags with an onboard air compressor. This is very, very common because you have that adjustability from five to 100 PSI. Well, that is only as useful as you have air to add or subtract in there. You can subtract as much air as you want, but if you don't have a compressor, you can't add any air. There's a lot of people that, um, they swear that they do not need an onboard compressor because they're always hauling the same trailer. Well, that works out great for those people. They hook up to their trailer with the same amount of PSI in the bags, and that's perfectly fine. The problem is, is if you're towing something that is a variable loads, like if you're going to pick up building materials on a trailer or in the bed of your truck, well, you don't want to drive to the place to pick up your materials with no air in your bags because when you get there you're going to need air and if you've ever driven a truck um, like i have with 30 to 50 psi in the bags it is going to ride like a ton of bricks if you do not have it loaded down so it's kind of one one evil or another you either have to pick to drive there with your suspension super stiff or you have to drive home without any air in your bags so having that onboard compressor is going to be allow you to put whatever amount of air that you want in your bags on the fly you can be parked at a stoplight, think you meet, need about 5 to 10 PSI more. It takes about 10, 15 seconds to add that air. You can test it out for the next mile or two, and at the next stoplight, let a little bit out if it's too stiff. It's just there to help you utilize your airbags to the best of your abilities. Now, one tip I like to give people is when you're hooking up your airbags, you do have a choice. You can hook up the airbags to their own lines, one per airbag, and they will, you can either match the PSI or you can put a little bit more or a little bit less than the other one. Um, a lot of people like to tee off the airbags, so all they have to do is air up one air chuck on the back, airs up both airbags, they will always be at the same PSI. The problem with that is if you tee it off, you are still going to have body roll, so that won't help you if you're towing a camper or something like that. It's not going to help you with the body roll. The other thing having separate air valves for your bags is going to help you with is if you have say a work truck um, of this model and you have ladders on one side which aren't very heavy and maybe a toolbox full of tools on the other side you want to put a little bit more air on the toolbox side than you do on the ladder side because that side of the truck is going to be heavier and you make you may be able to feel that in your truck when you're driving but once you put these airbags on put a little bit more psi in the heavier side of the truck 
then you should have your problem solved. The truck will ride nice and straight again, and you won't have that anymore. Now, when it comes to the insulation, this install is not really too bad. Um, I'd say the only specialty tools that you would need is going to be maybe a floor jack to be able to lift up on the back of the hitch. That's just gonna give you more room to work between the axle and the frame of the vehicle. Um, another note is that if you have the Trail Boss Edition, you will want to pick up a two inch spacer block that we sell on our website. Um, it is designed to work with Firestone. Firestone actually makes it. Um, you will have to have that because their suspension sits a little bit higher and you don't wanna stretch your bag trying to mount it because it will be hard mounted to the frame and to the axle. So if you have that extra package, you will need that extra spacer. But um, all in all, the installation is not really too bad. I've installed a lot of different kits that ins install a lot of drilling. This one doesn't involve any drilling and it just bolts up to where your bump stop was and then bolts on to the plate at the bottom where, or on top of the axle where the bump stop would have originally hit. So everything just bolts right up. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. To begin our installation, you wanna lower your spare tire, get it out of the way. It'll just give you more room to be able to work. Um, and we're gonna to have to take our heat shield off so we have more access. We'll take a 13 millimeter socket. We're gonna have three bolts here. We'll have to take out. Now, in order to get our airbags in place, what you want to do is you want to put a, uh, we've got a pole jack here pushing up on the bottom of our hitch. You just want to lift up maybe an inch or so to give yourself more room to get the airbag in place. I went ahead and did the passenger side already. Now, when we get this started, the only thing that's going to be different from the driver's side to the passenger is going to be this heat shield. So whenever you put the airbag up, uh, airbag up into place, make sure you throw the heat shield on before you bolt everything down. But to get that started, we'll take the, we're gonna take our Johns bumper off using a 10 millimeter socket. Uh, this is also gonna help to give you some more room when you lift up on the back of the truck. Um, just, you know, use whatever you've got at home in order to do that. But we'll take that 10 millimeter. Take our Johns bumper out. Now we're gonna take the flat head bolt um, that will require an Allen key to get it installed. We'll hold this bracket just like this. We're going to put it on the outside of our frame rail, flat up against our frame rail. And then you'll want to line up the bolt with that bolt hole that we just took our Johns pumper out of and run that bolt up into place. Now we're gonna take our airbag. You want to take your Bracket, lower bracket, take this bolt, thread it into place. Uh, you'll want to leave this kind of loose so that you can move this bracket back and forth. We will still have full access to it to be able to tighten it down later with a wrench. But we'll take our bracket. You want this tab to be facing in and you want your air chuck here on the top to be facing out. Now, right before we lift our airbag up, we're gonna take our fitting that goes on top of it. It's much easier to get this installed down here. And you'll see this thread locker here, the red thread locker. We're going to tighten this until we can't see that anymore. Now with our fitting on, you want to turn the, uh, your fitting towards the inside of your vehicle. You'll see these two holes. This is for the fitting to go up through. This is for this little uh, nib on the top to go through. And you want this bracket to be facing inward. Now you can make a little, a little fitting to hold the air out of this, but um, I personally like it to be up and in place where I want it to be. And then we'll center up our airbag, set it up on top of this little piece of metal, and then we'll take our bracket and we'll have to slide it underneath. And we'll take this spacer, slide it up under the, these tabs here. It doesn't rightly matter which side you have the slotted hole on. We're gonna take the hex bolts that come in our kit, slide a washer over them. And then this, you wanna line up with the holes on this bracket right here. I have one on the front and one on the rear. Now we can take our flathead bolts, 
We're going to slide them through our bracket and make sure they go through the hole in this plate here. So we got that down through there. We'll do the same for the front side. Now to make it a little bit easier to put the nuts on uh, this bolt here and this bolt, we're gonna take this bracket off. It just takes a T40 Torx bit. We'll have three screws here. Now we'll just loosen that bracket and that'll give us space to be able to run a socket up in here. Now we're gonna take our hardware. You'll have some flange nuts that come in your kit. We're gonna take that and thread it onto the bottom of our bolts. Now this is a very, very tight area. So if you can hold the nut on the bottom and spin the top, that makes it a lot easier. Now we can take a 10 millimeter socket and an 11 millimeter wrench and tighten down our, the hex bolts and our bolts up here. Now we're gonna take a 9 16 wrench and tighten down the bolt that's going into the bottom of our airbag. Now once our airbag is installed, we can take our bracket and put it back up into place. Now once you get the one side done, you'll want to repeat that same process over on the passenger side. Just keep in mind, like I said earlier, you will want to be sure to put that heat shield up before you put the bag up and into um, that top bracket. Now the last thing you'll have to do for your kit installation is you want to run your airlines and then connect them up to the bracket that comes in your kit. Um, we've got this, uh, this bracket and you'll just want to put it around your hitch somewhere here. Um, you can, there's all kinds of different places you can put it. If you don't want to use this bracket, um, what I always recommend is you drill out the top two holes of your license plate. Just put your, you can put your screws down in the bottom two holes um, and we'll come back and show you. Now we've got our compressor installed. I've gone ahead and ran our airlines. So this is how we run them for air bat, or for a compressor. You just want to start back here. You can run it up. You want to follow your existing wiring. Anytime you go through a uh, metal hole like this, you want to put some either some electrical tape or um, a piece of wire loom like this so it doesn't wear a hole in your lines. And then go into a T and go down into the bag. Again, this is if you're just running it for manual bags, manual fill, you would just take that line and run it straight down. And then you'd run another line over to the uh, passenger side. But if you're going to run it to a compressor, you'll go into the T, down into the bag, then you'll take it out of the T, go over to another T on the passenger side. One of the lines will come out of the T, go down into the bag, and then again, out of the T, and then come up to our compressor where we'll connect to the side. And the, this Chevy has a really nice factory wiring harness up on top of this frame rail. Just zip tie it to that all along the way. Now what we need to do, now that we've got all of our lines run to our airbags and to our compressor, I'm gonna put some air into our air fitting here at the back, pump it up to about 50, 60 PSI, something like that. And then we're gonna take a bottle of soapy water and go around and spray all of our connection points to make sure we don't have any leaks. What we're looking for here is we're looking for uh, some rapid bubbles to be forming around the uh, site where we have our airline put into the fitting and we don't see any there. You will have some bubbles coming out of your the spray nozzle, but we don't see any new bubbles forming. You may have a lot of little ones forming or some larger ones. Now that we've got everything tested out, we found there's no leaks, we'll, we can go ahead and put our heat shield back up, put our spare tire back up, and that's gonna do it for the installation. Well guys, hopefully this video helped you decide whether or not the Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs are right for you in your 2020 Chevrolet Silverado 1500.